Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Panics won't be attending with them. But let's take a look at what map they will be playing on. Yep. Now, I remind you, uh, if you're on Orange, which is Penta's uh, pick here, they're playing defense and the attacks for Team Empire. And we're going to play on Coastline, my favorite right. map. And you know what a lot of people say? If you want to beat Team Empire, go play on Coastline. That's what people say for online and offline plays against Team Empire. Well, I imagine they're looking to shore that up. Let's see what you guys think about it, though. And all right. Yeah. Penn just built themselves up a little bit of a following here. Yeah. I don't think people that voted realize that Penguin's no longer on the team. I don't know. I, I Like you said, they've been doing quite well oh, yes. recently, so it, it doesn't surprise me that much. Necessarily an Empire, a little bit less of a known quality coming up from Challenger League, but... We are starting off. Let's do it. Let's see how now, their coastline is. Let me remind you of the matches that uh, Penta Sports have had recently. So this is a team that, you know, won in Castle Siege. So technically they are the German champions. Also, they are the French champions. Well, nationally, that is. And then at DreamHack Winter 2018, they beat Niriki. Oh, no. They Poor lost choice. the G2 in, um, in the, um, how do you say, in the groups. Then they beat Niriki again. Then they beat Chaos 2-0, beat SSG, an, an amazing team, able to beat them 2-1. And then in the grand final, be, uh, lost the G2 2-1, which, you know, made G2 the winners of DreamHack Winter, sure. But because of how the disposition functions for the slots, it meant that uh, the game between Penta and SSG qualifies the winning team to a sixth invitational. And that's how things worked out for Penta. And now, Ash, Motan the two first band operators. Mira will get removed, which means we won't really maybe see uh, any defenses up in the loft. Yeah, possibly. I mean, three sites often have to be played, but all four are good. You will be seeing a lot of Ash bands against Joystick throughout the season, very likely. Yeah, if you could ban both Ash and Jaeger, or like yeah. all operators against them. Yeah, definitely a case where he is very strong on those two operators, and he usually shows. Ash gets banned against him quite a bit, but most teams do not want to ban Jaeger, so you will most likely see him playing on that once they're on the defense side here. Joystick uh, often switching to Jackal whenever Ash is banned, so you probably will be seeing him play quite a bit of that as well. But this was Jackal's map where he was introduced. And this is one I think he's decent on, although controlling roamers on this map, not nearly as difficult as some of the other maps where you often see Jackal played. Capital going to be six picked in there, but possibly changed to a Dukby. There we go. Pulse going to be snuck in as well by Ravon. So we'll see how that goes along with the mute to potentially help also protect him from being caught out as he Defenders, plays. Protect your bomb they are going to be playing by in attackers. Hookah first. As you said, without the mirror, not as likely to play inside the penthouse side, but still doable, just a little bit different way to play it. Uh, maybe not as reliable as people would like. So Hookah will be first. All right. So Start off in Nuka, as you say. Sir Boss is, of course, playing the mute in here. A, in my opinion, a pretty good mute player. Um, I can't wait to see what would happen on the attacking side because we got two great Ying players on Penta Sports. Uh, and, of course, she is not banned in here, so that'll be fun. And, of course, Revan playing the Pulse here, expecting to have him downstairs in the blue bar for quite a bit. You know, hungry setting things up. There's the Mira band, so you're not going to see any Mira windows that are tricky here and there. Overall, pretty standard. I think we've seen Coastline so much in the previous season, and even before that, that this is just, you close your eyes and you think about it. And Okay, we're attacking the top floor. What do we do? Well, we have to clear the bottom just in case. Why? In this case, there is two C4s that we have to wait out, that we ha really have to deal with. And that's what Joystick's trying to do here. He actually plays a pretty decent Jackal. And running the PDW9 means he just gets more firepower and a beautiful scan on the Pulse. Literally the player that he's hunting in this situation. Yeah, he's definitely got to try and track him down. And very often you'll see them playing inside the kitchen, which is very likely where Pulse is. Yep, there he is. Inside kitchen. This is a, a pretty typical play just because of, well, you're below uh, at least one of the bomb sites. In this case, it's not necessarily Hookah. It's below the penthouse site. But... Still, it's an area where you can kind of hide out until you're needed later. But as he starts to get hunted, could be down early. Although this is going to take up a lot of Joystick's time. And doing so, he's such a, uh, a frag-heavy player some of the time, but also a very unpredictable one that Ravon's going to have to be smart to stay alive in this as uh, more footprints get tracked. 
Yeah, of course, with the footprint, the diffuser, uh, they don't really disappear, Attackers so you can just keep scanning Pulse again and again. Now, a beauty of playing the Jackal is Bomb that located by attackers. you are not just detecting your opponents, but you're also making sure that they can't really play against you. Now, those joysticks see that the Maestro is there. Now, Fire has just been uh, set in, and there you go. Joystick does a lot of damage. Reverend's actually dropped on the floor, but he'll get easily picked up here by Sir Boss, I believe, just playing right next to him, which is what you'd be expecting. Two C4s Attackers next to one another makes a ton of sense. Attackers Thermite already uh, made it happen, but Revan will connect. Shockwave will go down, and that's now two players that are off the board for Empire. Well, you could blame it all on Joystick, because had he got that kill under the pulse, then he would have also saved his teammate. But the Mute Jammer did a good job with disguising the Maestro, however. Enemy taking out Karzeka. This is down to 2v5 already. And 56 seconds left. This is not looking good for Empire. I believe it is said Karzeka. Yeah, I, I've been corrected. I, I can't quite say it very well. It's so I know. hard. I know. Such a, such a majestic name. <laughs> this is what I strive on. For, uh, literally my only skill yeah. as a commentator. It's, it's okay. Sorry, You'll maybe. get it. <laughs> as long as, until they introduce the, the two new ops, then I'm screwed. <laughs> well, there you go. Enemy will find one and last alive is Shepard. And, you know, SMG 11, well, in this case, the CZ 75 is pretty good uh, secondary, but not good enough to face off against enemy. And just, he's just raising the back. That's all he needs. It's all easy. It's all yeah. okay. Smooth going. That was a great round for enemy as well. He got quite a few kills from his position. And then that C4 that came out from Raven almost immediately after he got revived as well, definitely helping out. But they're going to have to do a little bit better job droning next time and not just count on, oh, we've got a footprint. We know how to execute. Because the mute jammer that Maestro was standing right on mm -hmm. not only made it hard to find him with a drone, but also protected him from any phone calls that might have come out from Shepard to try and help. Indeed, a very good point, actually. And this is the thing. You don't want to run the pulse solo. No, it's you want, you want him to be able to look at his heartbeat sensor, not Indeed. get shot in the side. Indeed, and that's why the mute was there. And here we'll get a sixth pick for Revon, and he'll go back to the mute, which is great. Smoke and mute have had... I can't wait until we get statistics so we can actually show the pick rates of these operators, but my god. Need to locate and both both mute and smoke have definitely... Well, smoke specifically has been up there literally all the time, but... Mute Bomb is climbing his way to the top very quickly. Sometimes I almost feel like we see more Mute now than Bandit, which is... Uh, Actually, yeah, that is 100% true. We do see a Y. Shotgun plus SMG 11. You can now forego having a smoke because of that change. If you haven't played the game in the past couple months, the hell, yeah. maybe you should. Number oh. two, for Mute players, this was a godsend. Like, oh, now I don't have to use the M5K all the time? Great. Yep. I mean, it, it's it's one of those weapons that's much better with an ACOG sight. Because, uh, you know, you see the uh, the dock and the rook with the MP5s. With I mean, actually, it's not an MP5. That's why I said with the MP5. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, man. I knew that was coming. Walk right into it. But yeah, you know, it's one of those guns that it doesn't do a lot of damage. Very so having the ACOG gives you the ability to be a little more accurate towards the head, which makes it much more likely you're going to land a kill. So, you know, it makes more sense on Dock and Rook. But now that you can run the shotgun SMG-11, as you were saying, on mute, it starts to become a little more versatile. Indeed. And obviously it is still a choice. And having the choice, having the option is definitely what makes the game better, in my opinion. Just flexibility for any Attackers player that wants to change the up their style. There you go. Kind of check is just watching to make sure that there's uh, nobody that can push him here from the security room as Revan is in there and does indeed have an SMG-11 trailing right on the entryway. A spot in from Joystick as uh, he's going to have some player upstairs. They'll bash through the walls here. They realize it's all open and the player in the back is no longer here. He's just keeping them on the move and that's their boss on the castle. You can tell by the pulverins, the shoulders that he has. He's doing a good job staying mobile enough, but also Joystick's not giving away his position, which is smart, until he actually has something concrete to act off of. It's going to give a little bit away there, opening up some of the wall, but he's acting a little bit like Buck in terms of using the ITA to give himself some sight lines. So that's a good use of that as well, to be able to do something, but just Sir Boss playing just tricky yeah, enough. Now he's got to deal with one on the bar as well. Yeah, there are two players, as you highlight, uh, in this position. There's. There's not a lot of flexibility for you to move around in that position. Shockwave is going to go down the floor. Both smoke canisters, actually, or smoke grenades, will get used. Joystick is spraying in, hoping for a headshot. This is the, the big problem with running the PDW-9. Yeah, you get a ton of ammo, but 
these are these are not going to do too much damage. And there you go. See joystick on the floor. A minute left. A ton of time still to play here for Team Empire. But Shockwave was picked up and is now down fairly low in health, immediately at the 23-24 mark. Unfortunately, they don't have a ton of map control, given how little time is left. Now they've got to pick up the diffuser, and well, now they've lost either. Shockwave also low on health. Wow, it's a great dive in here from uh, Joystick. Uh, so no angle can really be found on him. Oh no, <laughs> enemy finds it, Joystick runs right in. Gets the second one on enemy, but that's, what a loss, the Jaeger is now down, but at what cost? You you know, you lost the Zofia right before you attack. Now you're going to lose Shockwave because of Hungry. And Kajeka's down, Joystick's down as well. So much damage has already been done. And Shepard, yet again, it is uh, the Dokubi is kind of stay alive right until the end. Call coming in, under 10 seconds left. And there's three players to deal with, one of them right above you. You're not going to do much. Oh, no, he finds one! <laughs> Pretty cool play here, but will not be enough to win it. Two players at the end down and taken out by Shepard. But the last player upstairs is going to be more than enough to grab the round and claw it away from Team Empire. I have to say, the individual skill definitely does show, but you're not going to beat a team like Penta just with pure individual skill. This is, remember, the only team that forced G2 to lose a map at the Major in Paris and the only team that G2 lost to, straight up lost to, throughout 14 play days of Season 8. Otherwise, they got two ties, one against uh, Mocket and one against Vitality. So one on Clubhouse, one on Oregon, I believe. And they lost to Penta Sports. Crazy. Well, they crazy did, how nature do that. They definitely seem to be doing okay without Panics so far. Mm -hmm. Blaz seems to be doing a good job, although he's been pretty consistently Attack maestro so far. And bomb. I, I gotta say, one thing that's always disappointed me is Joystick is such a beast on Ash, and then it gets banned, and I never feel like I really see Attackers his Jackal play impactful. We're not seeing his pings turn into kills most of the time. We're not seeing a lot come out of it. We're not seeing him do a lot of killing. It just, I mean, maybe he needs to pull up IQ or something else that's Intel plus fragging. Is that a little bit better? Is that a suppressed MPX? It is and he's like, you them. know what? Everybody complains that the MPX does no damage. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to slap the suppressor on that baby. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Even at, even at one damage, as long as you hit the head, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, Five I mean, why do you need remaining. so much ammo? All you need to say, just to hit one headshot. Just hit headshots, low. <laughs> is that not a valid strategy? <laughs> it I is. Thought, I thought that was the pro level strat. It is. It is. All right. Just making sure. It's starting, to, it's starting to make me think there was a, a new non-headshot mechanic in this game. Imagine, Blackbeard. imagine if you could have a, like a, a headshot only kill setting, like in you know CS and BF. It's it would it would very much make some matches. Oh no, it'd be very, like playing Terrace Hunt with nothing but the bombers. <laughs> oh. Actually, hey, again, can, can we? Yeah, I was saying in Arabic, minhal I'm, uh, Oh, because I know what that means. <laughs> from this from this elevated position above our followers and listeners. I will please plead to have the ability to have that setting in terrorist hunt. Just uh, how, about the, how about the opposite, where there's no 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 bombers? That would be thank you and no worth C4s. It. Oh yeah. my! You know, there's a C4 on Clubhouse. I believe there's someone someone of a masochist over at the R6 team that likes to put a very sneaky C4 Ooh. somewhere. Oh, nicely done. Speaking of sneaky. No C4 needed. A blast is just going to take the head off of Shockwave. Just shutting down. Every single time that Team Empire want to do something, they're immediately shut down. And this whole push yep. was to try and come in from the back. And, and uh, that's their only hard breacher down now as well. Very problematic here. Not that you need a hard breacher as much on this map, yeah, but still. I'm surprised this, it's the Thermite and not Habana. Well, yeah, that does seem like an odd choice, but ooh, Blast cannot get the second one, and he's getting low on health now. He can't re-engage that very well. Hungry will connect, Scyther will go down, so now loses the Zofia. A lot of your soft destruction is now out of the way. Karajeka, the old refrag, and Surboss finally taken away. Enemy, though, will find one. There you go, that's <laughs> MPX with the suppressor. I can just hit a headshot, and there you go. He'll get the kill, joystick eliminated, no more Jackal, Shepard and Karajeka alive, Last two, yet again on the squad for the yeah. Russian squad. This is a lot of 2v4, 2v5s coming out from Empire. I'll give them a now, one point that uh, range... Oh, this should be an easy kill here. Again. Oh, there you go. Finally, Shepard. That, that got a bit too close. I gotta say, Shepard's been doing pretty well with the Doki, though. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to blame this on like the MPX suppressor or what, but I think there's going to be a reset here. Yeah, there you go. Blast going to be up to 50% health. Which is a lot for someone with that much armor as well. Indeed, indeed. Now you've got to add like 20% extra health through that. But one, one thing I was uh, talking about with Ranger is that, you know, in his opinion, I completely agree with that. Um, you know, the closer the teams are in terms of skill level, the more defensive sided and hence equal coastline becomes, even with Mira being, well, especially with Mira being removed here. Kajika will go for the grenade, but the ADS is set right in a perfect position. He spots the site of the T5, and he goes for the fight. Kajika will win it out to get a bit of extra damage, but is hungry to find it. Kajika lasts alive, low on health, and will get shot down. Blast on the Maestro. Beautiful bit of play from the Hungarian here. And wonderful for Penta that they put up an extra round on the board. Unfortunately for Joystick, he won't be able to get to play that Jaeger for quite a few more rounds. And by that point, Penta might be up quite a few points. Again, just some lack of flexibility in terms of his role. Just not really working out for his team. I mean, Shepard seems to be doing a pretty good job holding his own. Some of his other teammates variably doing you know, better. Whereas Kozeka has played a lot of Sledge and does okay with it as well. It just seems like these guys kind of stick to the rules for the most part that we've been seeing them play since like Challenger League days. And it's just, I don't know, it, it makes them a little more predictable as well. Shepard actually going to be changing up. But again, I think that's a role that maybe Joystick would be better taking up. We'll see though how it goes this round as they go to Hookah again, as they've rotated around now, done three sites. So they could do the original site again. Attackers need to locate Maybe a little bit better this time. Now, last time we saw, for example, Joystick really struggling coming in from the uh, aquarium side and trying to do something against the little bar as well as Sir Boss that was over in the hookah itself. Partially because that just couldn't really find much purchase on the actual, in, in, in terms of map control. But also, uh, Blast was able to do a good job in terms of uh, holding his own on the stairs. Let's see if that ends up being a big deal this round as well. Now, they are bringing the Thermite, but again, what are they gonna really use that for for the most part? It just doesn't seem like they're gonna get much mileage out of a Thermite, it's just, I mean, yeah, maybe you could uh, repel in the courtyard, blow up on the wall to get into the other side of the bar, I suppose, but that's such a risky play. Attackers recover the fuse. No. Attackers are it's just not really a Yeah, it, just, it seems like an odd choice to uh, to keep bringing that when there's got to be better operators you could be bringing. I mean, you know, something else that could per perhaps bring a little bit more firepower would be a good choice. I really just think Team Empire are not really running well when it comes to communication between them. They're not really allowing the usual flat fraggers on the squad to really do much, and Joystick is just going to do the same thing as he did before. Now, I'm not sure if it's really just Empire not communicating well, or Penta just really understanding how to deal with them, because it's just a repeat of the same strategy. Blast just... This is... I, I want to say this to everybody that's like, oh, I had this guy in my, in my rank game, and he was, like, roaming with a dog, and I just... I just hated myself in that situation. Maestro is, he's roaming with Maestro. It doesn't matter. Roaming is all about a mindset, not about an operator. Operator, Yeah, sure, some things, some operators ease things up for you, but it's more about how you think, how you maneuver yourself, and look at that angle. Joystick will go down, no damage whatsoever. Done the blast. That is as clean as it gets. It's certainly just about being unpredictable. In this case, Joystick, he's completely relying on footprints. I mean, maybe the idea is, you know, we have the other guys getting droned in, but Joystick will do his own solo thing going in, which is, you know, something a lot of Ash players will do. And he's got the footprints to help him with that. The problem is, he's got nothing else to help him with that. And you can only see one footprint at a time. Yeah, imagine if you can see all of them. Yeah. Not I mean, you could see them, but Asia, I mean, you could only track one at a time. Very, very well said. Well, enemy I mean, just setting up here by the reinforced wall. And a big reason of why bringing Habana would be great here is because you could have just opened up the side. Ooh. The Thermite is just so much more of a risky maneuver and Shepard will find Blast finally shutting down the Maestro here on the IQ. The amount of time that's already been burned, I really hope that Blast has set up his uh, Evil Eyes in the correct position to face any potential smoke play even though there are no smokes available. I'll correct myself. Yeah. Joystick's already dead. But yeah, exactly. And that's the problem is Joystick needs to be the one to help set up the smokes to plant on the A-bomb like teams typically do. But because they don't have that, they can't really plant. Oh. They're going to have to kill quite a few more players. For Revan and Sir Boss, they got the info here, and they're going to force their opponent back. C4, can he pick it up here? No, nah, it's a bit too high. Just waiting for that moment when he can trigger it. In no, he did. Wow, that's a real long arm there. 
Shockwell, Shockwell will find one on enemy to take down one, but Hungry, beautiful play here. Uh, the smoke, will he go for the aggression? Now he does spot the rotation, drop and he'll the drop the IQ. Oh, That's all that's needed. Back. Smoke will finish off his opponent. This could just sit in a beautiful play from Hungry. Just no need for him to move. He'll get spotted and down by Kadashika. Shockwave will find the kill and finish off Hungry. Revan try to move in. He'll get one on Shockwave. Kadashika, last man alive. No Nitro Cell needed for this kill here. And there you go. Kadashika headshot it down. Revan will save the day in the last two players, knowing exactly when to rotate. I have to give it up to Penta for this one. They just read it so perfectly and timed their rotation so well. Even in the closest round so far, they're still able to bring it back. 4-0 up. It for, feels like a secret was the yeah. last time where they're just not adapting on their attack. They just, this, I don't know. This was the big conversation, actually, Devin. I, I really want to, to hear your opinion on it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people were saying, you know what, Team Empire dominated everybody in Euro Cup, which we both uh, were there for mm -hmm. to see live. In Milan. Live. Yeah, it was beautiful city. I'm so sad that you couldn't go out with me there. Penta was also there as well. Indeed. So and he's, Penta he's ended up play. losing. Yeah. They got third place in that tournament. Um, you know, Team Empire uh, won it all out through Challenger League, demolished Attack everybody. The qualifiers had no problem going through ends, at least ends taking it to a third map against them. Yet here, they just are non-existent. I, I, I am scratching my head trying to find an answer for it. And I don't know what is in uh, what the hamster wheel gives you. Right? I mean, really, it's that predictability. They're not doing anything new. They're playing the same, mostly the same ops that they generally play. They're playing kind of the same way that they usually play. Yeah, it worked great in Challenger League against teams that aren't as great at the research and having a coaching staff and being well prepared for things and knowing how to play against them. Not to mention, you, you know, mentioned, oh, Coastline, not a great map for Empire. Well, that's the map they're playing on. It's just... There's a lot of things working against them. They have a lot of individual skill, but they're too much of a known quantity now. And when you want to come in from Challenger, you want to come in as much of a wild card as possible to try and take some surprise off them. They just do not have that right now. And that's what they should have been working on during the time off. They should have been spending that time going, okay, people know certain things about us now. What can we change up so that we're not falling for it? And also, we need to make sure we do a good job of getting our homework done as well to make sure we're prepared for teams like Penta. It's, you know, they should know Penta a little bit better because, well, they, they were there in Milan with them, were able to beat them before, but just, if, if I don't even see Joystick playing another operator, it just, I don't know. He's doing things. the same thing. Like, what is the definition of insanity? You know, Joystick a bit of a far Jack? cry, a far cry reference here. Honestly, if it was, if, it, if Jackal was working for him, Great. And, you know, I could understand sticking with it for a while. But Why he's Thermite? This really? is all he's doing. Yeah, and Shockwave being on Thermite consistently. Karzeka's doing a decent job on Sledge. I think he consistently does well. And Shepard has been doing mostly well on whoever he's playing. Scyther's been in the middle of the curve. But Joystick and Shockwave just aren't able to put much on the board. And that's the problem. It's very similar to the stream where, you know, you have your top players, but they're not really showing up. And we're not sure if it's communication or not. And there you go. Penta just... Got getting together here, trying to push away any attackers coming in from the hallway. None of that so far. Karacheka will continue to drone in. He's very low on health on the opposite side of the map. Yeah. Scyther and Joystick still Scyther upstairs, at least Joystick on his own. Uh, no support so far. Scyther is downstairs. Uh, try to support each other from the top down. Now, what we saw before is the sledge of Karacheka destroying the soft wall. And I'm not sure if there's a soft wall still here. There we go. It is a soft wall. They need to reset him first before he does anything risky, though. Oh, well. Well. Speaking of risky, finds a kill first, just to make sure. Sir Boss, though, sneak it up on him. Uh, Sir Boss, one Attacker bullet is all he needs here to finish things off. And there you go. That's one. Karacheka is down. And while they lose the grenades, which is going to make things a bit more complicated for you. Rotation hole being wide in here as Joystick trying to find an angle on his uh, opponent below. And that's why you would like to use the ITA, but he's not going to find anyone. He finds the Maestro for just a second. Hungry's still alive as he fights to the death with his shotgun. He's going to go close up to the stairs, and his opponent, Shockwave, will just enter. This is the kind of communication you're looking for. The Thermite will move in by the soft wall, but Blast will not fire in, and the Fuser will get set. Sir Boss trying to fight from above, but the Fuser's Attackers not being planted here. It's planted right next to the side of the wall, and Joystick will find it finally. Thank you, Joystick. Finally finding two at the end of a round. Actually living till the end of the round is already an accomplishment. Getting two kills in the process, two thumbs up for that round for you. Hopefully 
that trend continues. Otherwise, you're going to be going into your defense pretty far behind. Already. This is not great. Yeah. I mean, this is the map that, um, you know, obviously with, with Mira and Echo being banned, will very much sway just a bit in favor of the attacking side. Yeah. And in theory. In theory, that is. Of course, we are speaking theoretically, and it's not always something that will apply for every single game and every single opponent. But see so yeah, how things go here. Vigil is going to be uh, an that's, interesting pick for Sir Boss. That seems like an odd choice when you know he's consistently running Jackal. The one operator that counters you. Are you play Cavero? I suppose, but it's just a case of like, I mean, Vigil's a great operator with two yeah. great guns, uh, although not as not as great in, in the SG-12 as he Attack used to be, but still. Bomb. It's just, it, it is odd to me that, that uh, you would play an operator that is countered by the Jackal, but at the same time, I suppose, you know, again, there's only three sets of footprints he can track in a given round, one at a time, and uh, chances are they'll end up probably being enemies anyways. And this is an operator he plays very well, something we've seen a lot from him in the past, and I expect uh, some good damage to be done from it. He was also playing very well as the Jaeger earlier, so I expect potentially some impact plays here from enemy if he's allowed to have free reign upstairs. He's doing a lot to set up, though, a, a lot of uh, things to give him indicators. He's got his uh, little ice cream cones, as we sometimes call them, set up in various places along with the... Um, Barbed wire? Gujmo. Yeah. Let's see. There you go. That's what you're here for to pronounce it for me. <laughs> I had to learn it from a Polish team. I'm very happy that we have, uh, we're working with the Polish squad here at ESL. And so, you know, they can teach me and tell me how things are wrong. <laughs> so, Milos is here for. He's a, this is a study abroad program. <laughs> well, I did study abroad, so. I did what graduate. did you think of that? Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I was hoping that one slip on the radar. We'll, we'll keep going here. So. <clears throat> so, good use of the IQ here, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. I was going to say the angle might not be able to get it, but it does stick out just a little bit. Give him some ability to set things up so they can push in. This is kind of the intel collecting portion where they're just not collecting a ton of intel. Even if. A lot of them not on their drones. Even if they're droning very well, Empire have a ton of work with, to, to do with the Jackal, but still nothing they could find. And, well, they at least will find the first kill, and that's Sir Boss. And first the Vigil taken away. Blast now dead instantly by Shepherds. Enemy close up to the Habana and loses the fight. Shockwave. Empire. I feel like Empire finally turned their monitors on last round. <laughs> it's they're doing significantly better this round. <laughs> it definitely would help, that's for sure. I, I hear it. Does. Well, so far, down to a 2v5 in a situation that usually Empire would have been in. However, it is two good delay operators, and there goes one of them. It's all down to Goo Mines to slow things down. At least Rivon unable to get one, but Shockwave wow. puts him right to sleep. That was... Better? Yeah. And I know I've been saying this quite a few times today, but every single day I'm going to try and change my favorite word and sentence. A couple days ago it was thread the needle. Today it's going to be in stark contrast to. So Empire, in stark contrast to the first few rounds, completely changed the way that they're playing. You would think. They really don't. They just actually played pretty passive and let Penta get into them. And then they just got kills. And somehow Penta... Failed in the in one of the things that they were doing so well, winning those one v one gunfights. This is what I was gonna say earlier that that uh, Shockwave should have been doing is playing Maverick. If you're gonna be playing an operator that's a hard breach and you don't necessarily need a hard breach, play one with a good gun. Yeah. Play one that is a, a much more effective fragging operator and, and one that can also set can. up great flank opportunities without making a ton of noise. We'll see though if it if it pays off, but uh, but I think that is a better choice. Hungry gonna be the one to actually bring the jackal here. See if we can do a bit better on it than uh, Joystick had. Joystick all the way down there at three, but this is where he starts to equalize things. He is a phenomenal Jaeger player. Oh, a very yes. unpredictable one. However, part of the reason this map is a bane for them is Joystick is great at being very fluid and unpredictable on his roams, but this is not a great map for roamers in general because of, uh, you know, as I like to say, the square donut that tends to trap you in a lot of positions, especially when there's a jackal involved. However, I do have some faith that he can successfully rotate the courtyard if he has good, you know, call-outs from the rest of his team. They do have at least evil eyes to provide some intel. They could have also brought a Valkyrie for additional eyes into the mm -hmm. courtyard and things like that, which I think would have been a good idea. 
but we'll see how they go in terms of uh, whether or not they can have enough intel for good realms. Now, first, Blast is taking a decent chunk of damage early on on the Zorphia. Um, but you, know, you mentioned the uh, the Black Eyes of Valkyrie. Uh, I'd like to also add something that teams like Dark Zero and Rogue do quite consistently, which is using a lot of bulletproof cameras. And especially on this map for Rogue, uh, you know, there's bulletproof camera, if you set it in the wall, right behind the... Um, the desk area, where it looks all the way down the center of the map, it has a pretty wide field of view and protects you from any flanks. Now, Joystick is up close against the opponents. <laughs> we'll take down both drones and at least get those for free. So, yeah, that's usually his entry spot as well. So, he definitely knows that area well. And the fact that he was able to rotate pretty freely back to kitchen is going to leave Ravon guessing, assuming he's still nearby. Without a lot of drone coverage to find him again. This is this is where he excels. Oh no, Hungry will find the kill on Shepard. Too early of a kill here as he's just on the purple tarp. Definitely something that, you know, some people think, oh, this is not available anymore. But no, it's not. It's very much available and uh, easily doable. And of course, if you're really attacking on the top floor, it's a very easy position to just take and use to your advantage. Definitely doing well with it and has rotated off of it now. So this is where they need to get a little bit more control. A few more kills would help, but a lot of oh. the stuns there not working out for Empire or, uh, Joystick in general. Uh, Joystick, the instant he tried to run away from Blast, he got stunned and the kill happened. Blast again will find the kill. And from below, it is Revon to try and make things work with the buck. Unfortunately, he takes a lot of damage from Karjeka, who has an extra cell in hand, but the amount of damage that he, can, that he has already done, one bullet will be more than enough to finish off the buck of Penta. There you go, enemy will go down. No, that was actually a freebie on the Maverick. Was the Maverick trying to open the wall behind him? Definitely Attackers quite possible. It doesn't look like uh, he managed to get anything going on except for that little tiny hole right there. So, yep, it looks like that's what he was going for. Was a peek from there. Is the body on the floor in the middle? It looked like the body was on the floor right by the hole. Hmm. So, weird. Behind the uh, the bookshelf. Alrighty then. So, Scyther just setting up for extra boom mines. There's two here just to cover the wider hallway. Her boss will look on in, but he's got to be careful. There's a uh, close angle that can be used against him. Blast was just going for the plant as Kaseka will find a grenade thrown right into the bandit. The C4 will connect. Blast will go down. Kaseka manhandling. Penta Sports with a 2v2 now. 15 seconds on the clock. Revan's still low on health, and he is right up close to the bandit. The bandit, easy kill there on Revan. Unfortunately, he can't really do much. Hungry will find one, but he still has to deal with his opponent. Scyther, who walks right around, is right behind him, and Scyther will find the last one with a T5 SMG. And that is what Empire needed, an extra round on the board. And I have to say, Karjeka's bandit play was absolutely fantastic on the round. And that's what I mean by people sleeping on him. He's definitely a fantastic player, but it was a situation where on attack, they're just not doing a good enough job kind of corralling the players before they make attacks on them and losing a lot of gunfights due to flanks and such by just good roam play that they weren't able to control. Whereas on defense, they do a, a much better job acting as kind of a cohesive unit. You even saw Karjeka there at the end, very low health, still managing to stay alive. And guess what? Scyther comes around to back him up. And that's the kind of coordination they have on defense that really works for them as a team that just is really lacking on those attacks. However, that got very close. They did get down to two players left before they were yep. able to bring it back down to two themselves. So it was, uh, it was a little down to the wire. Enemy just continuing to tease Thermite, but switching off of it this time to Twitch Defenders instead of Maverick is going to be bringing that. Attackers. So that should be useful to at least be able to take down some of the mute jammers, possibly take down some of the ADSs, and maybe even some goo mines as needed. But they're also going to be able to spot those with Sir Boss on the IQ. So that, that should be a nice one-two punch to be able to get some idea where you're going before you go in there. They just need to make sure to do a good enough job with the rest of the drones to at least corner Empire in a few different spots to whittle their numbers down. Now, Penta have two excellent uh, Twitch players, actually, Enemy and Revon. Uh, Enemy has quite a bit of, uh, of time on the Operator and definitely has been doing quite a bit of work with them, which means, you know, taking down any utility, ADSs, crew mines, and even to some extent those Moot Jammers, very possible, but, uh, you know, we saw this with uh, teams in Latin America, we saw this in NA, the F2 is just such a huge bonus of a weapon. It really compensates for, oh, maybe mistimings or, or anything. The higher rate of fire does rate, help. In the rate of fire level. is king in, in, at the pro level. Yeah. When all you need is one headshot, the more bullets you can throw at the head, the faster. Absolutely works. You say that, but then LL players are not the same anymore, aren't they? 
Well, you know, the uh, the recoil can really make a difference. It's, and the recoil with the uh, the F2 kind of rides up, so oh, yes. you can't... Now, a lot, there's a lot of crouch spam kind of things that goes on at the pro level sometimes now. So being able to aim at kind of crouch level and ride that recoil up towards the face, something that the F2 has always benefited from. It's definitely not as um, spammy as how things work in uh, APAC, that's for sure. If, you know, if, if anybody here is watching and, you know, very much closely listening in, APAC is happening on Saturday for the final qualifiers for the Invitational. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, we're all going to pretty much be up and watching it just to see, like, what has changed for at least the other teams within the region. So I highly recommend, you know, yeah. tune in with our wonderful co-casters that will be bringing the, bringing the action from Sydney. Yeah, we never get to see enough of those guys because they uh, they aren't usually out at the uh, the other events as well. So it's unfortunate, but a big shout out to the APAC casters. I think they're all a wonderful bunch of fellows. Uh, Dev Marta's kind of here though. <laughs> I don't I don't want to point anyone out. <laughs> all right, oh, well, Dev. Joystick is upstairs and he can jump out here and attack Sir Boss, but it'll take so much damage in the engagement that it will have to fall back. It's too bad he doesn't have a dock on the team. I think I remember Shepard playing a lot of really good dock past, but. He is still going to be a force to be reckoned with, although now they, at least they have some idea where he's at. Uh, C4 had been thrown out. Revon will, of course, escape it, and Scyther will have no more utility to play with. And of course, Team Empire bringing two shotguns to this fight. Shockwave will find one blast is going to go down. You know, opening so much of this soft goal that was left in for Team Empire, just so they can contest, contest their opponent. Shepard on the back, though, will find one. Revan will go down. You see the punch holes that have been pre-opened by the smoke of uh, our Russian team here. One round away from tying it 4-4. It seems like the overarching metagame conversation of this map is really switching around very quickly. Scyther ready for a dive over the bar, but nobody's going for this. It's not a dive bar. <laughs> this, these are some things that you'll learn when you go out. Clubhouse is the dive bar. Yeah. You, when you go out with Parker at times, you'll learn these sorts of things. Well, Hungary will find one. Will he dive on top of Scyther? Yes, he will, and actually win out the fight. But it'll go down very quickly. Karajeka and Shockwave trying to save the day from the opposite end. Karajeka with one, and Shockwave for the second as well. All up to the AQ, and Karajeka will find it. There you go, the headshot. Servos will go down, and that's a tie 4-4. Four, four. Knocking at your door. What worries me for Penta's sake here is Empire is definitely going to be doing, as I said earlier, much better on defense. The fact that they were able to manage to take two rounds on the attack towards the end, get a bit of momentum to swing into the defense, makes me think that we could see either a tie or Empire coming out ahead on this because Penta are going to have to do some pretty heavy adaptation and really singling out players of Empire because you see them doing a lot of good job, or a, a, a good job watching each other very often. Joystick is the one that's going to be playing solo, but he's also the one that definitely doesn't need someone to trade for him as often. He kind of does his own thing very well. and also makes it hard for them to get map control, to get flank positions on the other players. So the two things combined, the, the teammates watching each other, and of course on a five-man team, you can't have three pairs, right? So you have two pairs, and then you have Joystick doing his thing. And yeah. it really thwarts their ability to get anyone singled out outside of Joystick, and he kind of does his own thing about that. It just, it really works out for Empire on a lot of defenses. This map is, is like I said, a little bit harder for that, but nonetheless, they're doing a fantastic job of that. You saw with the Deep and the uh, Smoke doing a great job covering each other last round. We'll see how Shepard does on the Clash that he was able to sneak in as a sixth pick this round, if he's able to hold them out. This is a, this could be similar to a defense we saw come out from Liquid before, where they would have Sexy Cake playing inside VIP for this penthouse defense with the Clash and doing a good job just holding VIP somewhat solo, uh, both on the VIP window as well as the Hall of Fame door, and just really delaying them as long as possible because it's hard to get a flank around from the actual VIP door itself without some decent map control over on the Hookah side, or the, uh, the Aqua side, rather. I'm interested by this Clash, of course. Uh, Clash has received quite a few changes recently. Yeah, not, um, not so great anymore, but... I mean, the, the, the thing that made her great is something that, in my opinion, was extremely overpowered, with the fact where she could very quickly switch between the shield mode and her SMG. Yeah, and but this plays, this plays into what I was saying about what Empire are good at with this thing is where they cover each other. Yes. Yes. So I think as long as they Attackers continue to go off of that, it will be fine. If you use Clash's shield and not as gun, it's like Monty. Here's, here's an interesting idea. So Clash slows people down, right? 
and you've got a pulse below. Mm. This is a situation where you can stop them from being able to escape off the spot. Let's say there's they just delayed for just a second. Throw that the uh, you know you get them on the heartbeat, see that they're slowed down or stopped. Get the C4 up, and then the clash slows them down. They can't escape from the C4. Boom. Might not happen, but it's definitely a, a combo possibility here that could be executed. We'll see where the, the clash actually ends up playing. Joystick doing exactly what I was talking about, just kind of being this thorn in their side. But he's also going to be helping cover Shockwave in a way. So that definitely will pay off to an extent. He just fires into everything. It, it works, right? I mean, I, I'm sure it would you know benefit if he had a, a even more yeah. bullets, but... There you go. And that's how you get on top. There you, if anyone doesn't know, coming in. There you go. I actually spent quite a while trying to find the correct angle. That and was the, beautiful. Yeah, the pros have to spend a lot of time doing that. You, you really need to know the ability to navigate the maps the best way possible. Ooh, no. nice kill on the shock. That is uh, unfortunate. That is the, the, the pulse down. Pulse. So your theory crafting does not function in this one. Game's not over. <laughs> I will prove you wrong. And this is where the threat finally comes into his own, where you just blow up the side of the bedroom. And yeah, this is the one bomb site. Well, I say where I will say thermite is pretty useful. Indeed. Oh, well, joystick uh, peeking in from the old hallway. He's not going to find anyone just yet, but uh, yeah, at least he's trying to use the clash behind him to help him out. Blast is inside. Attackers have recovered. Yeah. Oh. Their boss will detect the Eager. There you go. I'm sure he'll be like. You know, on the other side of the map by the time they're able to do anything with that information, though. Ooh, but it doesn't matter. Blast on the cross. Damn. That's that's call that he was wearing. That The headgear definitely does fit in this uh, this context. Well, Shepard still alive in the back. He can slow down his opponents. And Scyther can use that to his advantage with the remote gas nades. But, you know, the, the easiest way in this situation to deal with that clash is to use your Zofia. Remember, the stun, the stun grenades, the Kishmots really do push Shepard away, and there you go. They also have the buck that could hit him from below if they have enough time to execute on that. They timed it with the grenade, but a grenade in front of the clash, very much she has a Ooh, ton yeah, of explosive resistance. Scyther will get one, but he's now down, and Shepard is down as well. Kajika will have to rotate in, but he has definitely is spotted in this one, and there you go. Enemy peeks in, and well, well actually Blast will peek right outside here and there you go he heard the lesion taking down the drone and that's all he needed to come in and find the kill it's very odd because this sort of oh hey we'll thermite the wall and get into the bedroom and plant definitely not something that i've been seeing too much with the current metagame of the game yeah it's, uh, it's definitely interesting in terms of the way that they're executing i think a big problem with uh Empire's defense that round is they just weren't good enough at holding that bottom floor. They lost Shockwave early on that pulse because that they lost bottom floor control when Joystick rotated up as well, kind of gave it up to them. And from there, they were you know able to focus on the top floor because they didn't have to worry about the pulse anymore. So that early kill freed up enough time for them to get uh, a lot better angles on the top floor. And then, of course, getting the catch onto Joystick rotating Defense was definitely not great. He is uh, certainly not immune attackers. to being droned. And it was just a good timing. Blast doing a good job in terms of being in the right place at the right time a lot of the time for his team. It's definitely paying off. However, I think there's a good chance we see this go back to a 5-5 scoreline this round as long as they don't uh, make similar mistakes. They are going to be playing on Hookah this time, so it will be a little bit different in terms of where they'll be defending, but it is still a top floor bomb site. They will not be bringing the pulse this time, however, so they don't have to worry as much about controlling the bottom floor as uh, they're going to be able to play a little bit more top floor heavy. Karzek at Definitely going to be playing a, a good bandit role again, I imagine. Uh, this worked out very well for them last time. Although it did get down to the wire in terms of it, it being a 2v2 towards the very end, but I would imagine they could potentially live a little bit longer this time unless uh, some good weaknesses are found out. Still not sure that they really need that thermite in this case. They, they probably could play a little bit differently last time. Uh, last couple times, uh, the enemy picking, he six picked off the thermite to something else. So it is odd that he would go with it this time when he should probably know they're either going to be playing Penthouse or sixth, or I mean, uh, switching over to Hookah. But in this case, they lost Penthouse. So I suppose it's possible they, they could have gone Penthouse again. Yeah. Just, it's, yeah, I wouldn't have imagined it being likely. So No, I, I don't think... You, going going to Penthouse without Mira is... Very teams attackers. will usually attackers only go to the site if they do have a mirror. Well, that's why they were kind of using the Clash as the mobile mirror. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it made some sense that they were trying to go for that attackers approach. It just didn't work out in the end just because 
took too much damage, and of course they did have the Zofia. Yeah, and this is the idea now. It's like, okay, you know what? We're not really prepared for it with the abilities and the utility that is afforded to us in this round, so we're just not going to play. And we'll make also, it they have a Zofia and a Capital, so that would not be something you'd want to deal with as a Clash. Indeed, indeed. And well, Joystick is still downstairs, obviously moving constantly, keeping his opponents on their toes. And so many murder holes have been set up for him as well. Revan's on the opposite side here, right in the office by the uh, blue bar and spraying in from below. We can find somebody early on here for the team as, uh, you know, we saw him do some sort of work in uh, the near past. He can definitely blow up the floor. There we go, right now as we speak. Uh, blow up the floor right next to their opponents, but Joystick will get spotted as he moves away. He's gonna try to fight it. No damage done to him though. Ravon will take one bullet, and I'm not sure if Joystick here, I don't know if I heard him using a suppressor or what, but. He definitely has some idea where, his, uh, where Ravon is, but Ravon also, I think, is kind of read into this. There he is, he knows the flank is coming. A little predictable, I suppose. Oh, well done here, Joystick will fall, and that's the entry frag that was required for Pentasports. What do you do when you want to take the top floor? You clear the bottom one, and that's exactly what happens. Coastline is so easy to read at this point. It very much is a complicated checklist, Ooh. or not so complicated kind of checklist matter. Now that is the Capital down, which means if you can burn more time, they're going to be much less effective on trying to make this plant. And 35 seconds left, it's going to be tricky. Uh, Sir Boss, unfortunately, wishing he still had grenades here. Shockwave will take out one more. Spray it right to the side, and Sir Boss somehow hitting the headshot here. Shepard watching in, but the diffuser's already been set. Penta, find the opening. They just move in. Scyther will get one. Ravon is removed from play. Not sure why. He turned away right at the right at the stairs here. Maybe he was confused by the audio cues, but enemy and Sir Boss will try to clutch this one out for the team. Both have line of sight in here. Goomine is going to get set up right on the window, which will slow anyone down if they really want to go up from the big window. Not the case in here. Try to defuse this one. His enemy is going to move up real close. They hear the diffuser happening. Shepherds will and land one. No sound. Oh, no. No time. No time at all here for the IQ to come back in. And Scyther would just keep sticking it and knowing that he can just play this for his advantage. And the smoke using his last gas canister right at the door, that that really limits line of sight. Like you think, oh, it's just yellow smoke. It really hurts you. You really yeah. can't see what's going on behind it. He was also doing a good job of pre-firing the door as well, just to keep him busy. And that also kept the Thermite from pushing too aggressively. Because mm -hmm. the Thermite pushing, when there's that pre-firing happen, could have easily walked into shots. And the timing that he had, like you said, he hit the smoke. That was Thermite's cue to be like, okay, he's kind of maybe rotating mm -hmm. or changing position. I'm going to move now. And he heard now. the diffuser. Yeah. And he, he did at the right time. Problem was, the IQ wasn't able to back him up. And it just, the angle at which he was able to defuse successfully, as long as his teammate did a good job covering, absolutely worked in fantastic defense there, a managing to sneak in. It, it is uh, a great that Penta was able to get the defuse down while they were so focused on the hookah side, though. Definitely some smart heads up plays there. Pretty even score lines. And I have to say, as far as matches we've casted so far for the season, this is the closest we've had to a tie. Because the closest we, we had some 7 4, or a 7 4 was the closest that we had two days ago. Whereas now that we're at a 5 5, this is uh, so far the closest. This mm -hmm. is the most even match. We've this had. would have been a tie in our previous uh, format. Mm -hmm. Not the case here, which is great. I definitely think there's a strong possibility of a tie. Just because Penta are definitely not rolling over on defense, but neither are Empire. And at this point, it really could go either way between these two teams. Back down to Bar, though, which they've won. So far, the only site that they have lost is Penthouse. They've won Hookah twice, Bar once, and they're going back to Bar again. So this does... Oh, boy. Joystick oh. going... Oh, no. There you go. That's one of those, that's one of those peak outs that rarely uh, gets punished. You either get away yeah. with it or not, most of the time nothing ends up happening, but it's it's uh, kind of worth doing, to be honest, especially if you're a three-speed that can rotate off it quickly. Anyways. I mean, Kanto did it uh, the very <laughs> final game against Supremacy. That was yeah, almost an interesting match. Yeah. The highlight of my casting career, G2 versus Supremacy, final game of Season 8. I don't think that was the highlight of Supremacy's career, unfortunately. Well, they are going to get in early, do their usual thing. Joystick not here to slow them down this time. He is going to be checking cams, though, Attackers trying to get some idea where they can go. Again, no one bringing Valkyrie, though, despite the fact that it's still available. 
does uh, make me think they're they're really giving away uh, a little too much map control sometimes in terms of not being able to get some idea where people are because there are some good angles you can put or even like you mentioned earlier bulletproof cameras things like that uh, as long as the, as well as the evil eyes there's a lot they could be doing to get better intel on the attackers. Uh, which would give joystick additional intel to rotate around, as well as to know when things like, I don't know, the diffuser is getting planted the behind them. <laughs> a very good point. We'll see, though. Joystick is actually kind of holding an angle. Hope he can catch someone coming through the door that he uh, himself had opened to try and make his spawn peek. These drones managing to get away a little bit uh, despite the mute jam. I mean, mute jammers, to be honest. We, we talk about them just, you know, stopping drones, but real realistically at the pro level, they rarely stop drones. You say that. Fun. I thought you were just going to stop there. <laughs> you say that. I, I, I did in fact. Uh, you are very correct indeed. I, thought I, I thought I might have just said it in my head, but <laughs> if you heard it too. And sometimes you do think out loud. I, I'm pretty sure that is my job description. <laughs> well. Ooh, nice C4 kill. That is going to start things off, uh, but trades back and forth. Oh, wow. Kazeka, double kill. Revan and Bloss will go down. Huge kill here, but look at the amount of damage done to Joystick and Kazeka. But it's still a 4v2 now. Activating drone. <sighs> Unfortunate here for Penta. We're trying to recover after really having a huge lead early on. No oh, spray in, but Scyther is ready. Oh, no. Hungry will go down. Sir Boss taking damage, and Shepard will clean him up. Six rounds on the board here for Team Empire. The comeback from the Russian team. Is this going to be an Empire win, or will it be the very first tie in this season? I'm telling you, man, if they could just sort out their attacks, they'd be an even stronger team. If they could just say, hey, Joystick, maybe try and find a few different roles. Hey, we don't need Thermite all the time on maps that don't really benefit that much from Thermite. You know, they, they could have a leg up on this map. I, I would love to see them really, like, boot camp their attacks on this map and then just make it one that's just, like, don't take them to this map. Pento, on the other hand, though, are doing a fantastic job. And I do, again, think it's likely we could see a tie here. Hmm. So now Sir Boss going to be giving away that he could find Karjeka. So uh, that could be a little tricky to deal with. Enemy not going to stick to pick off that Thermite. Wait, that need to locate and it's possible that by the end of the fourth can. day, we'll actually have a tie. Yeah. I mean, these these two are fairly evenly matched. In how many times... I wish we had, like, a CGG pop-up just to confirm everything. But, like, how many times did we have ties in yeah. the last season? Well, I just hope we see Spencer in Montreal then. I miss Spencer. Spike was cool. All the guys at CGG are cool. Word up. Except for someone. Would you like to put someone on the exception board, or...? No. Does my silence speak more, or, or, or yeah, saying so? It, it speaks volume. There's, there's no one actually. I think great. <laughs> there's no one you think is great. <laughs> Got him. All right, baited into that one. Now, well, Scyther will uh, open up the top part of this. Now, I'm much more of a fan of destroying the bottom side of it, so, so you can see the legs. But yeah, 100% do not reinforce that entire wall. I mean, you can do both. You can destroy the top and the bottom to give yourself the ability to throw Attack things over, as well as see feet. Yes. And you get the best of both worlds. But Joystick finally oh, winning on one of those spawn peaks. That's going to hurt. Tau. Yeah, Capital too. Ooh, yeah. So this you're only is, set uh, of smokes. Maybe this will go Empire's way. Oh, man. They go into overdrive in the second half. Really looking like they, the defense um, has been held down very well by both teams. Yeah, had they not lost Penthouse, this would be, what, seven rounds in a row for them? Yeah. That is uh, quite the overdrive. Sunset overdrive. <laughs> well, Revon here on the buck, continuing into drone. Of course, Katajika in this round is playing the vigil. Attackers so he's going to be moving around and maneuvering around the map, trying. Is, uh, there. Another good operator for him, I think. I've seen a lot of good uh, mm. plays by him on uh, Vigil, but I still think uh, Bandit is definitely a strong one for him as well. well. Obviously, there's no real need for Bandit on this site, so yeah, it, it is understandable to run the Vigil. No, it's good because the more you can just keep them busy on the drone, the less until they can get the more people like Joystick can rotate around as well, the less pressure they can put on the other three you know, site defenders, potentially. Sir Boss speaking in here, trying to find someone in the back theater room, and Joystick just finds another one. Okay. 
Ravon will go down. And even though Joystick was being punished and pushed from the opposite end, it just seems like he can just run between them. I'm not sure if they open the hatch for him here to drop, but if he wants to drop, the damage is already done. That's two kills for him. That's, and those are important kills, too. Those are two heavy utility operators. Mm -hmm. I don't think Thermite's going to come back fragging here. So this is a lot on Blast and Sir, uh, Boss here to do some work. And unfortunately, the angle is much more in favor of Shepard as he's watching it. But I don't know. Blast seems to know something's up. I mean, obviously, if the holes were opened by <laughs> the defender down below, that is kind of a big tip off. Joystick, though, giving away a little bit to Sir Boss here. See if he's going to get caught off. Uh, there you go. Scyther is going to watch. He used the Bailiff oh. to open an extra hole in Joystick. He finds yet another. Kajdeka with number four and all up to enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is looking very much the shutout here for Team Empire. Almost a seven-round comeback, but Kajdeka will go down. Will Joystick find the 4K? That is the big question. Here. Shockwave might take it here. He is right below and watching right behind the desk and can end it right then and there. Enemy will reveal his position as he pre-fires half the magazine left. Fires in, but Shockwave will clean it up. Ladies and gentlemen, Empire will win the first game as Penta Sports kind of muck up their lead early on and almost to the seven rounds in a row for the Russian squad. Just works for him. Fantastic debut, though, by Empire. Now, of course, they're going to have to step it up from here as uh, they are playing with the big boys now. Not to say that... Uh, they are the Euro Cup champions, and they did defeat Penta Sports. And in a three of them have been here before. Yes. I know. It's, I'm trying to make it sound even more exciting that they won this. Wow. It's like you're a caster or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I am. All right. Well, that was a fairly interesting game. I